Hi, I'm Lance Lambert. Thanks for tuning in to the Vintage Vehicle Show. We are in Phoenix, Arizona at the Mel Martin Collection. This is a great collection of great cars owned by a gentleman named Mel Martin who just it's amazing. He's standing right here. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for having us uh, uh, here in your collection. Well, that's what it's for. Yeah. Well, you, your, your reputation preceded me meeting you. I heard all about Mel Martin. If you're, we were coming to the Phoenix area to shoot some shows, and everybody said, hey, you got to do this guy's collection. So here we are. Yeah. Well, when I bought this building, I thought, gee, what a nice museum it would make. And uh, I had a little museum down at my office, and uh, so we decided to turn it into a museum and uh, we've got more room to grow. You have a kind of an eclectic collection, a little of, of everything here, yeah. various years and, and all the, most of the marks are here. Um, what, how far back does this go? When you were 12 years old, you got your first car or? Uh, yeah, well, I was 13. 13, uh, okay. uh, My brother went in service and he gave me a 26 Chevy. Uh -huh. And I immediately, I've been trading cars all my life, so I, I traded for uh, 31. <laughs> and um, we both, uh, rear end was out of the 31, and the 26 didn't run. So <laughs> we, uh, but uh, when I moved to Mayor, and when I was 16, my um, dad's uncle gave me uh, the 1917 Douglas truck. For, uh, for my, uh, when I moved out there, I was 16 years old. I've never heard of a 1917 Douglas. So. Yeah, well, I got two of them. Ah. My brother had one and I, and I had one. So, and I had that for 62 years. <laughs> you talk about having uh, a great collection here, which you yeah. do, uh, and some cars that have been around for a long time. Well, you have one over here that uh, it's, it was, it's a great car. It's an old car, and it was in the great race. Can we take a look at that? Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's go take a look. Yeah. The oldest car in the building, perhaps? Uh, close to close? it. The, the, the old Douglas a little older. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the, the, this is the next oldest. Yeah, this is the 22. Chevrolet. The Chevrolet, and it's a, a four-cylinder. Uh, we run it a Great American Race from, I drove it from Atlanta to Phoenix. And uh, we were supposed to go on to Anaheim, but the rear end was out again, and so we, uh, we were cooked. Huh. <laughs> was it set up for racing prior to your ownership, or did you uh, make the tweaks necessary to have it in the Great Race? Uh, it was. It had been in the Great Race once before, uh, before we, um, uh, before I bought it, and um, but I tweaked it some since then. We put seats in it, had lumbar in it, so you could adjust your back, and and I made it a little bigger in the back, cut cut the back end of it out a little bit, and uh, uh, we raised the windshield. We didn't raise it enough. Um, Should have changed the carburetors, but we didn't. But uh, it's a different car now than what it was when we were running the Great Race, but uh, it, it's really fun to drive. Prepping something like this for the Great Race, are you, can you hit 60 miles an hour with this, or are you? Oh, yeah. No problem. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the car, car run probably 70 or, or more. It's got a gear vendor overdrive in it, and now we got two carburetors on it, and electronic ignition, and it runs down the road very well. The, the Great Race itself, uh, starts from one end of the country and goes to the other. They change the locations every year. Every year. Everything that I've seen on it and read on it looks like it's really a lot of fun that you're probably pretty glad when it's over. What was your Well, yeah, it? Well, it's 20 days uh, and uh, you're very happy when it's over. <laughs> I was. Uh -huh. Normally you make four stops a day and the little cities on back roads, two, two lane roads and uh, and it's all a timed event. Sometimes you're running 15, sometimes you're running 45. Yeah, and it's not yeah. to get to the other side of the country. The first is to get no. to there when you're supposed to get yeah. there. Right? And, and, and they have electronic way of timing that. Every once in a while, somebody will give me a bad time. They say, well, your show's called Vintage Vehicle, but you don't really have that many really vintage cars in. Well, this, this is for them. This is a 1917 Douglas, which I said I had never heard of. Uh, tell us about this. This, uh, uh, two, uh, we have two of them. The, the, the truck come out of Kansas City uh, and a hall Onyx in Mare. And there's a little Onyx mine up there. And they uh, got a Buda engine, uh, standard. Uh, Buda uh, is a manufacturer? Yeah, it's a, a 
uh, matter of fact, your engine, they did a lot of forklifts and and uh, they furnished the engine for other companies. So the Douglas itself produced the truck and it's got a balanced dump bit on it. So meaning that if you put a little more in the back than you do the front and then you when you get to where you want to, you pull the lever, it dumps. Huh. And then if you wanted to get it shut, you pull forward and slam the brakes on and the bed comes forward. Whatever and, works. And uh, that's, that was a modern technique in 1917, I guess. But um, it, we use it in some parades. Great old truck, hard tires. Yeah, going down the road, uh, yeah. you, uh, your kidney ache the next day or? A little bit, I tell a story about it if you'd like to hear it. Um, uh, we, we had one of them, we well, used to belong to the JCs and uh, uh, the Junior Chamber of Commerce. And uh, uh, we had it up in Miami, a little city out, outside of uh, Phoenix. And uh, the cops woke me up in the middle of the night and said that somebody had stole my Douglas and taken it up to Globe. <laughs> I don't imagine and, there was some very exciting car chase on that. No, so. no. So they wanted me to come and get it, and uh, so I took a friend, and uh, we, it's really a mountain road from Globe down into Miami. It's got a big downhill. So we're going along in third to hold it back because it got only got two wheel brakes on the rear end, no brakes on the front. So we're running about 25 mile an hour, and the engine is screaming and I'm thinking I'm going to blow the engine up so I'm going to put it in high gear to keep from saving the engine and my baby here. Uh -huh. And I got it in neutral, couldn't, couldn't get it in any gear. And we went down through that hill. He was pulling on the emergency brake. I was standing on the brakes and I was, what I was trying to do, get close enough to the cop car so that I could run into him to slow me down. Uh -huh. He was leading me, we had no lights. So we're going down this hill, and every time I'd get close to him, they'd speed up. They, I was waving and screaming, yeah. and, and my buddy says, we slow down, I'm jumping. I said, no, you're not. You know? Anyway, we get, we, we get down the bottom of the hill, very accurately, and you talk about riding rough. Now this thing, we're, we're running 50 mile an hour in this thing. Hard tires, down the hill. We finally get to an upswing, we get it stopped. The cop come back and said, I didn't know it would run that fast. I said, I was trying to get you to stop me. <laughs> but that's our story yeah, about it. So our... you found religion at that moment. Oh, I'm telling you. 1930, is it a LaSalle or a LaSalle? LaSalle. LaSalle. Yeah. All right. This is one of the, uh, well, you said it's your, your favorite kid in right. there. And uh, right. justifiably so. Tell us about this one. This is a um, uh, four-door Phaeton uh, with a dual cowl, has the dual windshield, that means. And um, we drove this the Great American Race twice. Um, come close to winning it, but uh, that's another story. Uh, it has it's a flathead, updraft carburetor, uh, puts out about 110 horsepower. I, we, we installed a, a gear vendor overdrive in it so it runs down the road easy. Really runs cool, it's got good brakes, mechanical brakes, but very, very good brakes. And uh, uh, it's fun to drive. We use it a lot of parades and uh, it's uh, probably, uh, the, um, had the most fun in this car I've had of in, in any that I own, and uh, it's a great thing. We found the uh, statue for the radiator. It's that's the uh, LaSalle, the discoverer from France. So that's where the name come from. So my understanding on the LaSalle uh, that maybe it eventually became this or, or was originally, if, if you weren't quite ready to step up to a Cadillac, you got a LaSalle or were they, were they equal at one point? Yeah, you know, uh, and, I, and I researched that very, very closely and since I've owned it a long time. And uh, uh, Packard was giving Cadillac a run for their money and, and uh, they were lower priced. So they, Cadillac didn't want to lower their price. So what they did was they took the assembly line and they run, run these cars through the Cadillac sem assembly line because when I order parts, I order for Cadillac. There's no difference in them. They changed some of the chrome 
and, uh, and to change the name, and they call them Cadillac LaSalle's, and they lowered the price. So they competed against Penny. And that, that's the document that, that I found over the years uh, of so research in the So thing. the quality so, is comparable to the Cadillac. Yeah, it, it, it's all Cadillac. Uh, when we, we don't even mention LaSalle when we order parts for it or do anything with it. Uh, uh, bearings, uh, uh, we've been through the engine and, and uh, it's very, very nice car. Mm. Is this a wrestling match to drive? Is it comfortable to drive? Uh, Down the road, it's really nice. Uh, and when you're parking it, when you're slow, uh, you know, it's the old Armstrong method, and, uh, but it's got a big steering wheel on it. And, uh, and it's very, very drivable. It, it really rides nice. Uh, it, it's a pleasure to drive. Yeah. Okay, Mel. He, the, the, the guy back in the, in the past realized that things weren't going that well financially. He had to, to sell that LaSalle, but he still wanted some nice old car. So he uh, took his savings paid, or the money he made in the car, <laughs> paid off some of his bills, kept the mortgage on his house, and went out and bought a 34 Chevrolet Fiat. Is that, is that a good enough scenario? Can we build a movie or a book around that? Well, yeah, I think so, because uh, now the Chevy Register shows that this is the 34. Uh, Phaeton, and uh, with a lot of room in it, just like the LaSalle, only not quite as big. And um, it, it, the, all four of them got shipped to Australia, and they were all right-hand drives. Collector here in town brought it back, switched it over to a left-hand drive, and, uh, and then sold it to a museum up in Albuquerque, and a friend of mine. And I needed another four-door convertible for some parades, so I conned him out of it and bought it from him, and uh, we've had it ever since. We, we enjoy it and drive it a lot. A six-cylinder, three-speed, um, a knee action front end, which makes it turn real easy and, and ride real nice. Does this actually maybe handle a little better than the LaSalle? Or, or a little comparable? easier. A little easier, okay. Yeah, and it's shorter. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, such an unusual car like this, uh, then, then as you say, there were only four of them, but cars very similar to this. Uh, you know, lots of time you, you open up the hood and there's a 350 Chev in there. Yeah. And there's a set of wheels on it, and I, yeah. I, I'm not seeing that here. No, I don't do that. Uh, uh, a lot of them, you know, some, some of my people that hang with me would like to see that, but uh, uh, the, the 50 Chevy in there's got a 350 in it. But other than that, I, we, we like to leave them the way they are. Now there's a, as you well know, there's a magic overused word in the world of performance, and that's Hemi. Right. And your 56 DeSoto here features a Hemi motor. Uh, I had a lot of scoot back then, and, and people, 50 years later, over 50 years later, people are still gaga over Hemi motors. Yeah, and I, it, 326s and the Hemis, you know, I used to have one on the boat. So uh, I think we all had them, you know. Uh, uh, they, uh, a great car, drives really great, runs down the road, automatic, um, a lot of power, and um, it's a great ride. Uh, it's a classic ride, right. and uh, they, I don't think you wear one of them Hemi's out. Yeah. Uh, yeah they're perfect. Well, 56 DeSoto hardtop, uh, this is a fire dome yeah. model. This is, I would think, uh, the, the term gentleman's hot rod comes into place. The, the guy that was driving this back then was, was not uh, uh, just your uh, average family Mom guy. And pop. No, yeah. not to the store. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell us how this came into your collection and, and a little bit about it. I uh, was at um, uh, an auction and um, uh, it came up and uh, it didn't sell. Uh, and uh, as run an auction for a long time, I know sometimes afterwards why they uh, you can make a deal. And uh, I went back and made a deal for after the auction and bought it. Um, clean car, uh, runs really nice, and that's the kind of thing I look for. That uh, and it's as you can tell by my collection, I got a little bit of everything, and uh, it's. Uh, it's one of the better driving cars that, that we own. Uh, it's really a pleasure to drive.
The thing that's kind of neat about this type of car, you can you can drive to Pebble Beach in it and the people are going to love it. You can yeah. drive to the Rat Rod show and the people are going to love it. Yeah. You can go to the drive-in on Friday night. It, it just cuts through all layers of the car hobby. Yeah, and, and I think the Chrysler, when they come out with it, Hemingway, it, they, uh, uh, I was really you know glad to see them bring it back in, in the later years to, because it's really an engine that that should be around. And when you bring this to a car show, it, it, you gotta open the hood. If you don't, why? I open the hood and the trunk, because I have all kinds of uh, documentation in the trunk about it. And so it, it, um, uh, it it's, it's a great people uh, pleaser. Performance. Wow. This this is a Cobra and with a, a little bit of a story to it. Uh, it's, it's another page in the Cobra history. Why don't you share that with us? They uh, found 40 frames and they and they used the original bodies and they put 427s in them like the like the big Cobras and uh, um, they made 40 of these and uh, I bought this. I don't know, six, seven years ago, and it has six miles on it. Uh -huh. And we don't drive it. We start it all the time, but we don't drive it. And uh, it, it is uh, really a horse to drive. What do they license them as, as far as the year of manufacture? Uh, 66. 66, OK. Yeah, because that's what the frames are. Uh -huh. um, yeah. I don't know if you've noticed, but some guy scribbled all over your dashboard. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. Some guy named Carol. Yeah. yeah. We met him at uh, a Bear Jackson auction and had dinner with him, and a uh, uh, nice guy, really nice guy, and he signed the car for me. And uh, There's a lot of performance cars from the early 50s on till recently that that people just, you know, oh, that's such a cool Ferrari or that Maserati or, yeah. or that Corvette or that whatever. Why do you think Cobras 
have attained the the pedestal, the enormously high pedestal that Cobras are on. Why do you think that happened? What is it? I think it's Carroll, uh, and his, uh, you know, he he set out to beat Corvettes, and he did, and uh, and that mystique is still there, and. Uh, uh, he's a character himself. Yeah, Carol Shelby. Uh, and uh, got a whale of a heart. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, he's just a nice guy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Looks like a Corvette. Says Lister on the side of it. What's going on here? In 1992, uh, General Motors authorized Lister to create a concept car, three, three concept cars. They give them three new Corvettes, 92 Corvettes, and said they won them for the SEMA show in 93. Uh, they milled three of them, they wrecked one. So there's, there's one other around, I don't know where it's at. And they, the Lister people, as you can tell, looks like a Ferrari from the front. Now this is 1992-93, and if you look at the rear bumper, is what they come out with in 04 on their vets. So they had that for a 10-year period, uh, and they, before and they, they did, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, why they didn't use it before, I don't know, but they did. They, had, they um, changed the suspension in them, put bigger brakes on them, they put a blower on it. It's a supercharged engine uh, that, that produces 600 horsepower. Mm, wow. Uh, they changed the transmission in it, and, uh, uh, and modernized, you know, so it, really like a 07, 08, or even the 09 now. But uh, they've had that design for all them years. Uh, well, it, it looks like a Corvette. If I saw it coming down the street, I'd go, that's a, wait a minute. Yeah. But the front's different. The, the, the doors, I was thinking well, maybe just the midsection was all Corvette, but they're different. Yeah. Uh, the back end looks the most Corvette-ish uh, yeah. with the tail uh, taillight uh, uh, area like you mentioned. But you said they, they made how many of these? Three. Three of them. And one ended up here. One got wrecked. Where's the other one? We don't know. Don't know. I, I don't. I have any idea. I'm sure it's in a museum or somebody's garage that uh, knows what they got. Now with this particular car, uh, we've had it in a couple Corvette shows, but uh, uh, and it won best of the show. But uh, it, um, uh, we don't drive it a lot. Um, it's to me, it's so, such a rare car, you know. And and I, I'm. I'm crazy about that kind of thing, you know. There's a few off, you know. The uh, the Corvette next to us got 15 miles on. Wow! And it's a pace car, you know. But it, they, they, everybody thought they were going to go way up in value, and they didn't. But the car like this will definitely. You right. Know, yeah. Yeah. In fact, this one, I would think you'd be a little concerned to even drive it because it's we such have. a rare car. Yeah, we drove it. Yeah. Speaking of driving, uh, lots of times when I do the show, the my host is gracious enough to, to let me uh, drive one of their vehicles. You have something here that, believe me, it's just incredibly exotic and stylish, and I've never driven one in my life. Uh, can we? Can we uh, Absolutely. Right, you can drive any one you want.
I've never had a chance to drive a 47 Farmall tractor before. You told me I could drive anything in the place. I don't know why I picked this, but it's got a lot of charm. As you have, sir. Thank you, Mel, very much My for allowing us. Uh, you come great. back anytime. Okay, well, uh, the hospitality in Arizona has been amazing, so I think we're coming back soon. Good, I hope so. All right, well, I think it's going to be a, a slow trip home, but let's see what I can do here. Have fun. All right, thanks, Mel. Anytime now. Here we go. There we go. I'll be home soon.